Hello there, my name is Aladrium, and welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock tutorial with your favorite cardigan wearing Minecraft character. And today in this episode, I'm here to show you Nether Tree Farm 2.0. Yes, that's right, this is the new, improved, and significantly less resource intensive version of my classic Nether Tree Farm for your Minecraft Bedrock 1.20 world. This farm will generate thousands of crimson stem and warp stem logs for your Minecraft Bedrock 1.20 world and works both in a fully playerless, fully AFK mode. And if you want to increase the efficiency even higher, a AFK mode with that will work solely with the use of an auto clicker. This farm is super duper safe to run and most importantly, super duper reliable. I've done about six hours of testing on this farm alone. I have not once seen the piston push limit being extended, causing the farm to break. The farm will work reliably and consistently over and over and over again, allowing you to harvest thousands of blocks of the crimson or warp stem logs. Additionally, it has an auto shut off feature to prevent you from wasting bone meal when the cube maker is full and also to prevent those pistons from overextending, all with the added benefit of using absolutely no obsidian and significantly cutting down on the amount of redstone that this farm uses. And then finally, as an added benefit, this farm requires absolutely no slime blocks and absolutely no honey blocks to work, meaning that any of the previous reliability issues that were broken by the 1.20 update with my previous version of this farm are now completely eliminated, fixed, and good to go. So if you've been putting off building my previous version of this farm simply due to the obsidian requirements, I have good news for you. This farm requires absolutely no obsidian. The redstone is drastically simplified and now is the time for you to build this farm in your world. And just as a reminder, if you do decide to build this farm in your world, please consider leaving a like for the video and also please consider subscribing because you never know when I'm going to push out a new update to a farm that's going to have significantly more features, cost less resources and be simpler to build. So. Before we get into the tutorial, let me go ahead and walk you through the mechanics of this farm and just show you how it works. If you've already seen the previous tutorial for this farm, if the farm basically works exactly the same, you can go ahead and skip over this section, use the title sections down below. But if this is your first time seeing this farm, let me go ahead and walk you through how this farm works. As you can see here, I have two versions of the farm running simultaneously in fully playerless, fully AFK mode. They are generating the warped stem here on the left side and the crimson stem over here on the right side. This farm handles all of it for you. And if you want the increased efficiency, you can always get your own mushrooms and grow them yourselves. So starting over here with the farm running in fully playerless, fully AFK mode, we have two pistons with two dispensers right on top of them. The bottommost dispenser is shooting bone meal up, which is causing a block, either a mushroom or a grass to grow on top of it. And then the topmost dispenser, as you just saw right there, is bone mealing that top item. And when a mushroom comes in there, it will spawn a tree, assuming that the tree grows on the first time. This farm does run fully playlist and fully AFK, but as you can see here, you are dependent upon the RNG of the mushroom actually spawning and the mushroom actually growing. Now, if you did want to run this farm in a player based mode where you're just using an auto clicker in order to run the farm, all that you need to do is basically turn off this top most piston and then plant mushrooms on top of it. And it's a very, very simple system in order to grow those trees reliably, consistently, and all of the time. Now we've got a couple other new features around this farm. We have safety systems in place, buttons everywhere for you to test things. And if something does go wrong, fix them yourselves. You have guarantees that these pistons shouldn't overextend. And thanks to the new mechanics in 1.19 and fully fixed now in 1.20, none of these trees now actually grow inside of redstone or replace previous blocks. I know Mojang said that they fixed it inside of 1.19, but I was still kind of seeing this work very inconsistently in 1.19, but in 1.20, I've ran this farm for six plus hours and it works flawlessly. Trees are no longer growing in blocks or replacing redstone. It is, it is truly a Christmas miracle. 
Additionally, this farm and now has spots for both the top most dispenser and bottom most dispenser to place in bone meal. And you can also place a shulker on top of it, making you basically have infinite bone meal for this. Hook this up to a bone meal farm and build my bone meal farm down in the description. And this farm will quite literally run forever. And so with all of that said, let's go ahead and dive straight into the tutorial. So to get started with this farm, we're going to go ahead and begin with our classic clock design right here. You're going to make a T shape with sandstone blocks. Then you're going to place down a repeater. Go ahead and place it on four ticks. Torch on one side, repeater going into that block, redstone dust on the other. If for some reason that doesn't start ticking on and off incessantly, go ahead and flip that repeater around and you should start seeing that tick. I recommend you leave this at four ticks while you're getting the farm set up. And then over here, you're just going to drop a lever down that should stop the ticking of this farm right away. Then we're going to come up here and you're going to grab yourself a sticky piston and place it directly on top of this repeater as shown here. And then you're going to go ahead and grab yourself either some of this crimson nylium or this warp nylium and do a little ladder pattern as shown there. Coming over here to the side of the farm, we are now going to drop in our dispensers and we are going to place a dispenser pointed up. So you can place a temporary block then dispenser up and you can go ahead and knock out that temporary block. Then you're going to go ahead and get a hopper and go out one, two, three, and then one over here to the right side. Coming back over here, you're going to place down a temporary block right here on top of this hopper and then place down a, another dispenser on top of it. While we're over here, we're going to go ahead and build our clock mechanism. So make a L shape and then you're going to grab yourself a target block and place it right here in this corner. Then you're going to go ahead and grab yourself some redstone dust and a repeater. That repeater is going to go into that solid block, dust, 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 and dust, and then dust here. Flip this clock and you should see this piston moving back and forth and you should hear that dispenser clicking. We're going to place down that other dispenser on top of this solid block right here. Then you're going to go ahead and place a hopper feeding into it from the right side as we have shown here. And then directly behind that dispenser, you're going to want to place in a sticky piston. Once that sticky piston is in place, we're now going to turn our attention over to the detection circuit that will detect when a tree grows. So go ahead and grab yourself some temporary blocks and place them in front of this dispenser here and then directly on top of it. Have an observer detect that uppermost block with the red dot facing outwards. You can go ahead and get rid of these two temporary blocks. Then you're going to grab yourself a dropper, place that dropper in front of this observer and then have a, another observer detecting that dropper with the dot facing down. Once that is in place, we're going to go ahead and place a block here. It needs to make sure it's a slab. Slab here, slab here, get rid of that center slab. That will allow us to bone mill that without trees growing in there. And then we will now begin work on our platform that we will use for our double pulse detection circuit. So you can go ahead and start by building a two by three platform right over here. And then we're going to have a repeater facing out, a repeater on four ticks pacing into that, two blocks, and then align the rest of it with redstone dust and have that other repeater point into a solid block. So once that is in place, we now have the core circuit of our farm now ready. So we are now going to build up 20 sticky pistons high. Now it doesn't need to be 20 sticky pistons high. If you want to start this farm only 10 high and deal with the reduced efficiency, you can. You can make this farm as tall or as small as you want to because these trees basically grow as tall as they can. But once you have your desired height in place, you can go ahead and fill all of those spots in front of this with a solid block. Again, my choice is always going to be the sandstone. Sweeping over here to the back, place a lever, activate it, and then you're going to place these target blocks, every other block going up your tower to the very tippity top. And then you're going to place a piece of glass in a separate alternating pattern. So one is going to go directly behind each of these target blocks, and then you're going to alternate all the way back up as shown here. So you have a staircase pattern directly on the back of this tower. And then once you have all this in place, go ahead and line the target block, the glass, and that solid block right there with redstone dust going all the way up to the very top. And you should hear and see 
every single piston activate and be extended. It's very important that all of these get extended. Now about halfway up, you will hear this start to not extend and we just need to build a repeater. So when that signal is about to die out, add a repeater in, have that point into a target block. Then you can have a glass block right here, followed by dust, dust, and all of those should now extend and make sure that you knock out that piece of glass right there, swap it out with a target block. And now you have all of this connected so the signal doesn't travel back down. You should then be able to turn this lever off and you should see that double pulse and then click back in. If you place a button here, you have a nice easy access mechanism and just test and verify that when you push that button, you only get one push out of this and that it doesn't keep infinitely pushing and detecting itself. But once that's in place, now we just need to build our cube maker. So come out here from our sticky piston and we are going to extend out from this block another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks total and then from here we are going to add our detection circuit after we get rid of those temporary blocks so send out one more block have an observer with the face going back into our farm where the trees are generated and then right back here we're going to have just regular pistons here on the side so you can place a temporary block here and you're going to extend regular pistons to the exact same height that you built our sticky piston tower and again you can do 20 like I'm doing here. If you don't have the resources for all those pistons, just go ahead and make it 10, make it 15, make it 19, make it as tall as you're able to. We're gonna repeat that exact same tower design here on this tower, starting at the bottom most one, and then we're just gonna alternate down as shown here with the target blocks and the glass blocks. And then once all of these are in place, we're gonna go ahead and align all of this with redstone dust. And you're gonna have the exact same situation where we're gonna need to repeat and extend the signal. However, we're going to be extending that signal from our input that we have down below, rather than adding in a separate extender halfway up the tower. Coming back over here to our observer, go ahead and build yourself another two by three platform going to have a repeater, repeater on four ticks facing into it, align the remaining four blocks with redstone dust, and then that single tick repeater on a block, and you're going to go ahead up and tower four blocks up, and then you're going to turn over here and then go another one, two, and then you're going to go directly into this glass block. Go ahead and place a repeater here, dust, and then we're going to align the rest of the staircase with stone dust as well all the way to the bottom go ahead and place a button directly underneath here give it a push and you should see all of those pistons extend and you shouldn't see this tower flapping on and off finally it is time to build our cube maker so go ahead and go out one and that is two with the push three four five six seven eight nine ten and eleven blocks extend all the way out to twelve place a block beneath it with a torch directly beneath it as shown here you're going to paste a comparator point it out Go ahead and extend out two blocks here for a temporary measure. And then we can get rid of all of these temporary blocks. And then you're gonna line this with pistons. Now it's very important that when you line this with pistons that you make sure you have a two space gap. So there should be two blocks right here. Do not extend this over the full length. Otherwise you will have major problems when the farm is running. But assuming you have that spacing right, you can go ahead and just align this with pistons all the way up to the exact same height that you have built all of your other towers. Again, it can be 10 blocks. It can be 20 blocks as I have shown here. It can be five blocks. If you don't have the resources, make it as tall as you want. But once all of those pistons are in place, we're going to go ahead and swing around to the back of the cube maker. And then we are going to wire up our circuitry to have this cube maker eject all of our blocks when it fills up. So, Go ahead and place that right back down there. Come over down here to the bottom. We're just going to go ahead and build a tower up here in this corner. It's easier to build a tower when we're doing an alternating system. Go ahead and swap all the way back down to the bottom and then knock out every other block as shown here. Once you have all of these blocks knocked out, go ahead and place a repeater on top of each of them going all the way down this tower. And then we're going to line each of these rows with solid blocks again. Sandstone is going to be my personal favorite choice due to its versatility, usability, and ease of access compared to other solid block types. 
with those lines put in it is now time to align each of these rows with redstone dust so just go ahead and sweep all the way back down scaffolding is going to be your friend here if you don't have any scaffolding minecraft 1.20 is the time to start getting bamboo so get yourself some scaffolding it'll make this really easier for you when you're building this definitely recommend that instead of just building up in towering blocks come over here to this comparator and we're going to build a torch tower we're going to go up one two we'll make sure that's directly on top three and then four this topmost torch should be off when you place it then you're going to have a solid block with a repeater facing into it and then we're going to build ourselves a, another glass staircase this glass staircase is going to go up and down and the glass block should be directly outside of the repeaters that you have right here so touching the repeater then not then we're going to come all the way down here and repeat that glass tower and then once you have this glass tower in place you're going to line the glass blocks with redstone dust as shown right here and once you have that in place the only thing we have left to do is have our auto shut off detection circuit so come on back over here and we're going to extend out one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven blocks we're going to extend out one more and then do another piston detection circuit that we have right here which will detect when our cube maker is full so torch comparator and then that's going to feed into a solid block then we're gonna place a torch on the side of that. Go ahead and go down two solid blocks from that torch. And then we're gonna place a redstone dust on top of that, and then just staircase down. About two blocks out, you're going to place dust, dust, then a repeater so that we have a strong signal strength. Then we're gonna invert that signal with a torch and then run redstone dust directly under this all the way over to this repeater. And with that, our farm is done and now ready to test. So come on over to our main farm area. You're gonna want to make sure you have both some these red fungus mushrooms and you have a bone meal in all of these. I recommend you first test with the auto AFK system off so you're in manual placement mode. Make sure that that clock is ticking and then when you're placing it manually, you can just use this on one tick, the main clock and just place mushrooms once these mushrooms will grow the pistons will extend and you just want to make sure that all of your clocks are set up and that you hear the pistons behind you start moving all these logs into the cube maker itself now a couple notes when you are running this in the player mode you're going to want to make sure that you remove all of the bone meal from the bottom most dispenser because you'll just be wasting bone meal otherwise so make sure that you have all of that cleared out and then once the farm is running just make sure that everything's getting moved over into the cube maker and once you are satisfied that this farm is working you can then go ahead and fill up bone meal in this bottom most dispenser and test it in fully playerless afk mode make sure that this repeater is on four ticks so that there is enough time and enjoy your fully playerless afkable nether tree farm now, a couple notes just to remember about how this farm works. That bottommost dispenser will generate a random item on top of this, either this crimson or nylium grass, and then the crimson or nylium mushrooms that are growing right here. It will not generate a mushroom every single time, and there are times where it will generate a mushroom, but the mushroom will not grow. A mushroom, when it is bone meal, does not have a 100% chance of turning into a tree, so you're just gonna need to wait. It is fully random and it is completely up to whatever the RNG and luck of your world is. So if you've got time to kill and you've got infinite bone meal and you just wanna hang around an AFK at a farm, this is the perfect farm to do it at. Just let it run overnight or just for maybe about an hour or so and this will generate all of the trees that you could possibly want. Alternatively, if you wanna speed things up, you're on a deadline, go ahead and put it in that player AFK mode and just manually place down mushrooms for you. Now, in terms of rates, when you are in the fully playerless AFK mode, it's going to vary quite a bit because it is completely contingent upon the luck that you're having in your world. 
Sometimes you'll go a long streak, like we're going right here, where a mushroom just will not be generated. Other times you'll get mushrooms over and over and over again in a row. It is really up to luck. But if you are placing it manually, you can expect a new tree to grow roughly every second and a half. Now those trees are going to get taller and taller and taller as you grow them. So again, the rates are gonna be dependent upon how large the trees are. But in my experience running this farm for four to six hours, you're gonna have a cube maker filled in about 45 minutes to an hour, depending upon your RNG. Which if you're lucky, means you're gonna be getting around 2000 of these stem blocks, these nether tree logs roughly every 45 minutes to an hour which is pretty good rates for a afk mode and if you're really lucky is really good rates for the fully playerless mode and if for some reason you need even more logs go ahead and build four of them in this centralized pattern as i have shown here stand an afk in the center and then go and grab a coffee break or a whatever break for 45 minutes to an hour and you'll come back with basically 8,000 logs per hour it is truly a crazy way to get a ton of these logs and will absolutely cover any of the needs that you have for your Minecraft Bedrock 1.20 world. So that's it for me in this episode. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll have a link to a world download down in the description so you can go ahead and play around on this. If you like this farm and build it, please consider liking this farm, liking this video. If you want to see more content, want to see updates when I make new updates to farms, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.